Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter for 2019. We're almost halfway, we're halfway through the season of Easter. And our readings for today are Acts 20, verses 17 through 35. Revelation 7, the assigned reading is 9 through 17. We'll actually cover six of uh, chapter 6 and 7. And John 10, verses 22 through 30. We'll sing uh, with slightly different hymns. Our first hymn at Bethel is, Come ye faithful, raise the strain. And at Zion, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. And then, uh, the King of love, my shepherd is, and I am Jesus' little lamb. And uh, we'll also sing a children's hymn, I Just Want to Be a Sheep. Ba, 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 ba. So, uh, you look that one up on YouTube, it's fun. Uh, today also begins our diaper drive, where uh, we are collecting money to support uh, CareNet, our crisis pregnancy center uh, that has an office here in Grand Coulee. So, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, last week we were in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, and this week we've skipped over chapter 6 to chapter 7, and actually we only read or the second half of chapter 7 and the bulletin insert. But uh, So chapter 6 is not a, it's not a happy chapter, probably why we skipped over it. In, uh, but last week we heard about the Lamb was given a scroll with the seven seals on it that contained the plan of God, of salvation. Uh, but uh, just like when you, in a movie, when you open a magical book uh, that's been sealed, well, you release some things that you might not want to see. Uh, chapter 6 contains uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, not the from Notre Dame, but uh, horsemen who bring war and famine and plague and death, not just to the football field, but to the entire world. Uh, and then there's the faithful martyrs, who, uh, who we see at the sixth opening of the fifth se uh, seal, who have been slain for their faith uh, underneath the altar of heaven, calling out for vengeance and justice. And the sixth seal, brings, uh, brought on a great earthquake, and the sun and the moon were dark, uh, like blood, all the stars fall out of the sky, the sky vanished, uh, every mountain and island were removed from its places, this is all so terrible that the kings of the earth uh, uh, and all the leaders call for the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them, to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb and the one who sits on the throne, because they have only sought after their own honor and glory, and they have not given honor and glory to God, uh, to the Lamb, and to the one on the throne, the Father who sits on the throne. So after these terrible things, chapter 7 pauses from opening the seals, and, uh, bring, and we begin with angels, four angels holding back the winds of the earth. Uh, to prevent them from causing more damage and trouble. And God says, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. And the number of the sealed was 144,000, 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel, except Dan, which had fallen away and was, uh, was always falling into idolatry. So Manasseh and Joseph, or Ephraim, um, that does not mean that only 144,000 people are getting into heaven. This is a biblical, uh, symbolic numbers. 12 times 12 and times 10 times 10 times 10. That's 12 squared and 10 cubed. 12 is a perfect number, a completeness of Israel as a whole. 10 symbolizes completeness of order. Uh, so, 10 to the third power is even more completeness of order. Or, uh, so this is, symbolizes the perfect completeness of Israel. Um, most of the commentaries that I read indicate that, that this symbolizes the church militant, that is the church on earth, still fighting against uh, trouble and sin, uh, lined up like an army to fight as Israel 
would line up in the wilderness with the 12 tribes as the, when they were marching. And, and that these 144,000 are also part of the great multitude in the rest of the chapter that no one can number, that we hear, we read, that were standing before the throne and before the Lamb, singing and worshiping, which the angel says are the ones who are coming out of the great tribulation, who have washed their clothes in the blood of the Lamb. Not a thousand year tribulation or a, or a tribulation part of a millennial, a thousand years, uh, you know, not a specific thousand years, but the thousand years is is the time of the church that we are living in now. And, um, and we have tribulation now. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this life you will have tribulation. We all suffer tribulation. That means trouble. Our sins bring trouble on ourselves. Our enemies, Satan, the world, and our flesh cause us trouble. We are in tribulation, uh, but we pass through it. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. You've been baptized. You will wear the white robes and stand before the throne and before the Lamb. You are part of the great multitude of His saints that no one can number. This is about our future. Now, there, this says the great tribulation. There will be a great tribulation, but nobody will know that they're in it until it's over. <laughs> Uh, that that was the great one, because we always say we can't imagine that things are going to get worse, or that they could get worse, and then they do. Uh, things that are going on today were, were unimaginable 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, eventually, Jesus will come, and it will stop, and, and it won't get worse anymore. And then it will be all over. At least it won't be get worse for those who believe and trust in Jesus. It will get much worse for those who do not. Um, we, we also call this the church victorious. Jesus will give us the victory that he won and will be free from, from these taskmasters that trouble us in this life. We're not victorious by our own power. He won the victory there on the cross and he gives it to you and to me. And then we will again sing this wonderful song that uh, very similar to the one we heard in chapter 1 and chapter 5. Blessing and honor and wisdom and thanksgiving and glory uh, be and power be to God forever and ever. Amen. And there will be no more trouble. No more hunger or thirst or heat or cold. So in last week, the Lion of Judah was the Lamb who was slain, and now the Lamb is also the Good Shepherd, who leads us to the springs of living water. Like we, we talked about this in Psalm 23 during our Lenten meditations. You should also remember Jesus with the Samaritan woman at the well. This is the water that he promised, that when we drink it, we will never be thirsty again. It will well up within us. It will strengthen us to live forever. This is the fountain of youth. Jesus knows where it is, and he will lead us to it. And finally, God promises that he will wipe away every tear from your eyes. What a beautiful and intimate promise. All your troubles will be over forever and ever. God himself will wipe away your tears. Probably as your mother did when you were young. So, so why do we read this section that seems so similar, almost a repeat of chapters 1 and 5 that we read the last two weeks. Why? Because no matter how bad things get, when you keep your eyes on Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, the, the Good Shepherd, He will protect us and guide us through the trouble uh, that we now are in, to the victory celebration on the other side. Remember when you were young? Uh, who did you look for when you, when you were afraid? Who did you call out for in the dark? Mommy! Come here! Come quickly! I need help! I'm in trouble! Even little children who can't talk yet e either run or cry and tell their mothers, pick them up and comfort them, right? Uh, the more trouble they feel, the more they bury their heads in, in their mother's, uh, against their mother, mother's bodies. 
How many times as an adult do you wish that you had someone like that to run to and hold on to until all the scary stuff is done and gone away? But you do. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the lion, the lamb, the good shepherd. He will sh seal you and he will shield you until all the bad stuff is gone forever. And then he will wipe away every tear from your eyes and promise you that you will never be scared again. That's why we see these scenes over and over again. Keep our eyes on him. The bad stuff will end, but we will live forever with him. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.